As you advance in your skill at creating marionette objects and networks, you'll find that you can save time by repurposing already made marionettes for a completely different task. In this example, we'll start with Skylight Marionette Object and perform a little surgery to convert it to a recessed lighting fixture. If we right-click and edit the script of this object, we can see it's only slightly more complex than what we worked with before. It may seem overwhelming at first, but we'll break it down and explain what's what. Note that the Curve Profile and the Frame Profile nodes here are actually wrapper nodes to make the overall network a bit cleaner. However, it's the Rectangle node that we'll be altering first. To start, we want this to be round instead. With the Marionette tool, grab a Circle node from the Objects section and place it to the side for now. We're going to be transplanting the Rectangle node and replace it with the Circle node. Now, as you'll quickly notice, a circle node is not defined with a width and height, as a rectangle is. It only expects an origin and a radius, so we'll need to alter the input slightly. Delete either the length or width dim input nodes, and rename the remaining one Open Radius. Then, connect the D output of the dimension node to the radius input on the circle node. Delete the rectangle node, and connect the output of the circle node into the object input of the set planar ref ID to ground, whose purpose is simply to make sure that any object fed into it is always being created in relation to the ground plane. Now that that's done, exit the script and see your newly rounded object. If at first it appears jagged or faceted, not to worry, that's simply the default quality of OpenGL. Go to View, Rendering, OpenGL Options, and set the quality to High. Turn on edges as well if you like. It makes edges and corners in objects like this a little easier to see. Excellent. A nice, clean, circular, recessed lighting housing. You'll notice in the Object Info palette that we can type the name of the texture we want to use for the glass, but not the rest of the object. Let's upgrade this object to allow for texturing the frame as well. Edit the script again. Then, focus your attention on and zoom in a bit towards the area with the large orange Apply Texture node. See how the extrude that makes up the glass is fed into the texture node, which has its own input to control the names of the texture, and then is passed on to the input of the Move Vertical node? But that the Path Extrude object above just connects directly to that node, with nothing in between? That's the connection we wish to hijack to add another texture control. However, all the nodes we need are already present. Select the Texture Name input node and the Apply Texture node together, then copy and paste them slightly above. Note how since we copied them together, they kept their connection to each other, but after pasting them, they did not try to reconnect to the other nodes that were not in the selection. This texturing node needs to reside between the Path Extrude and the Move node, so disconnect the Extrudes output from the Move node, and instead attach it to the Input Object connection of the Apply Texture node. Then, connect the Object Output of the Texture node to the Input connection of the Move node. This would function right now as it is, but remember, we copied the Texture node and its Output String node, so if we exit, we see that not only is it set to still apply a glass texture to the entire object, but we have two identical fields and no way to tell which is which. Go back into the Editing mode then rename both of the texture input string nodes, the lower one, which controls the texture of the glass, to Glass Texture Name, and the upper one, that controls the texture of the rest of the frame, to Frame Texture Name. Then exit the editing mode. Now we have our two separately named fields, but they're both still set to the same texture. In this demo file, we've provided a texture already for the frame that you can use. So edit the newly created frame texture name to read Dark Frame Texture. For string input nodes, you can enter any text you like, but in the case of it being attached to an Apply Texture node, you need to enter the exact name of the texture, or it will simply default back to no texture at all. No typos. Render an OpenGL if you don't have render work, or Final Quality render works if you do. There. With minimal effort, we've created a completely new type of object without having to build the network from scratch. However, one more thing before we leave. Why should we have to enter the name of a texture manually? That seems pretty cumbersome. Why can't I just use a drop-down like other texture objects do? You can do that. 
edit the script one last time, then delete the two input string nodes, glass texture name and frame texture name. With the marionette tool, open the texture section near the bottom and place a get texture node in the same two places we just removed the two string nodes from. Connect these nodes each to the texture name input connections of their respective apply texture nodes and rename the get texture nodes frame texture and glass texture respectively. Exit the script and see now that your textures can be assigned via a simple drop down menu, exactly as you'd expect from other objects that allow a texture. Note that after converting a string to a get node, you'll need to choose a desired value for the object node itself to be the correct texture.